So with my own clothing brand, I try to be really transparent with customers. Sometimes I have overproduction that I'm just trying to get rid of, just too many pieces, and I will sell them at my factory price. Uh, meaning that I personally don't make any money, that my business does not make any money. Uh, and I'm very clear with customers and I tell them that I am making no money. My business is making no money. So any time that I've spent at all on my business, designing, everything, social media, finances, everything that I do, I'm not getting paid for anything. All I'm doing is getting my money back from the money that I gave to the factory. Uh, plus also shipping. I try to include shipping and taxes as well because I'm really trying not to lose money, at least break even. Um, and I understand that, you know, if you give a customer a price, if you give them an option and you give them a lowest price, they're probably going to choose the lowest price they can get. And still, even when I tell people, you know, this is factory price, I am not making any money, Still, sometimes I have people trying to go lower. And they don't really seem to care uh, that I am losing money on the deal and that I will go out of business. That's really not their concern. And I understand most people prioritize their own interests. They don't really care how my business does. In this moment, they just want this product for the cheapest price that they can get. And I started kind of thinking about this and, I, and it kind of made me just wonder more, more about design than anything else. That I think people sometimes don't really value design or, or they don't really want to pay money for design. I think people have an easier time understanding paying for a physical product. They're like, okay, well, I know that the fiber costs money and, and I know that the labor costs money, right? Because labor is such a big thing now as far as treating workers uh, well. But maybe they can see that, well, I'm not a poor factory worker, so I don't really feel bad about not paying you, but I'll pay for the fabric that goes <laughs> physically goes into making this product, and I'll pay for the labor for the factory. They seem to be okay with this concept, I think. And I get it, like it's easier to pay for a physical product that you see than paying for like a service, like a design service or something like this. Um, <clears throat> and I realized that Everlane, I didn't really put two and two together. Everlane kind of does something similar. They have the choose what you pay option on their website for certain styles. And it's the same thing. They have like overstock, overproduction that they're just getting rid of. And they wanted to see, I guess, what people actually end up paying. So they have a, an option to that gives, and it explains, it gives them money for development, shipping and overhead. And you can choose to pay Everlane 30%. 20% or 10% that goes to Everlane. Um, and I think they used to have an option that nothing went to Everlane. I thought, I thought maybe like last year, because it, it looks like they changed it a little bit. I thought they had an option where nothing went to Everlane and it was just paying for, for the product, the shipping, and, uh, the shipping and the factory price. So I thought they changed that. <clears throat> so a little bit goes to Everlane now, <clears throat> which makes sense. It's like you know, <laughs> you need to keep a running business. Um, and I thought this just was interesting. And I was reading an article that was maybe written a year or two ago about, and it was the owner who was speaking about this program and why they do it. And he was saying that um, Everlane tested, let me see, what year was this? Oh, 2015, end of 2015, December 2015 where the CEO was saying that they found that roughly 10% of people chose to pay more than the lowest listed price. So that means that 90% of people are paying the absolute lowest price, which meaning, means that they don't really care how much money actually goes to Everlane, the business, as far as covering development and design, covering shipping and overhead as well. Um, and then he goes, <clears throat> so anyway, I thought this was interesting because it's, it's the same thing as that what I've gone through where, uh, okay, 90% of people 
want to pay the absolute lowest price they can. And I think that this isn't something that we can blame customers for. I think this is something that's sort of conditioned into us, especially with fast fashion, not trusting companies and just getting a low quality product. I don't, I don't think people are used to owning high quality clothing. That's also an issue. So why would they want to pay full price or anything higher than their lowest option? So I think, you know, somebody has to make the first move, either customers paying more or businesses giving more quality and more better, better resources for the customer. So I think it's up to the businesses to make the change of making better quality clothing and offering, offering like, like longer warranties, offering warranties on clothing, um, offering mending, ser mending services, kind of like Patagonia is doing. I think it's up to the businesses to make the first move to offer um, offer better things to the customer. And then I think once once we sort of change this mindset about what clothing really is and what the quality should really be and how, how we should really value clothing, then the customer will sort of follow along and say, okay, I, I understand now that clothing should not, you know, it shouldn't cost $5 to buy a shirt that's, if we're really looking into making a shirt correctly and paying everyone fairly, you know, maybe a shirt should cost $50, $100. You know, it, it depends on a lot of variables. Um, but definitely this will take time.